Hi everyone and welcome back to episode 8 of the Spring Boot Security course. In the previous episodes, we looked at, the, at some core security concepts and starting with this episode, we are going to start writing some code. Now, before we do that, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel in order to stay tuned for more courses that will sharpen your programming skills. The first thing that we need to do before we start writing some code is we need to start from an unsecure Spring Boot uh, application. We need to build an application, very simple one, that is you know, just showing some pages and that is not secure. And from this point, we can then use ver various security configurations and see their outcomes. Uh, I would like to remind you that all the source code is available on GitHub. And more than that, um, I have created a couple of projects on, on GitHub. The first one is for the unsecure Spring Boot application that we're going to see in this episode. So that's a good starting point to follow uh, the rest of these episodes. And then uh, we'll have another folder for um, HTTP basic, we'll have another folder for security with GVT tokens, and another folder for security with forms. And I've decided to split things up this way, just so you can easily navigate uh, to various security configurations uh, without uh, having the rest of the baggage um, with you. So if you're interested in following this course, this is a good place to start. If you want to see how to configure security using GVT, then just go to that folder and look at a specific GVT configuration only. If you want to see HTTP basic, then jump to that folder and uh, you know see how you can configure Spring Boot apps with HTTP authentication without um, any noise. And I really hope that this form of um, splitting things up really help you to uh, understand the code uh, that we are using to configure security for a Spring Boot application. Now, like I said, uh, the unsecure Spring Boot app is really, really simple. It's just an application that has uh, four pages uh, rendered with time leaf uh, and the public REST API. So that being said, let's check out the code and see what our application does. I've just created a simple Spring Boot application, a pretty basic Spring Boot application. I'm using Spring Boot version 2.1 and I have a couple of dependencies, uh, the GPA starter, uh, the Tarnif starter, which I will use in the, uh, in the views, the web starter because it's a web app, uh, an embedded database H2 and of course the Spring Boot starter test, which you won't use that much, but it comes bundled with uh, uh, with Spring Boot. So nothing really fancy here, just standard Spring Boot dependencies. Um, our application basically, uh, sorry, uh, has four views. Okay, so I've decided to create three areas, uh, one for, um, uh, an ad for the administrators, one for the management, and one for the user profile, and an index page uh, which is accessible, which will be accessible for everybody. And as you can see, these are all standard, you know, um, time leaf pages. They just display content. They have no functionality whatsoever. Uh, they look almost the same, although only the text here uh, kind of differs. Uh, I am using a bootstrap to create an upper menu. And that's pretty much what this application does. If you look a little bit, uh, on the controllers, I have one controller for each view. So for example, the admin controller uh, just, you know, gives us uh, the admin index page. The home controller gives us, you know, uh, the home, in uh, the, the index page, the global index page, and it will also give us the login page when we have one. The management controller gives us the management index page and the profile controller will give us the profile index page. So each of these controllers is mapped to a view uh, in here. And then we have a public REST API controller, uh, which just, you know, returns some, some strings. Pretty simple application, you know, no custom configuration whatsoever. Uh, it's just a plain old Spring Boot app. Uh, we can fire it up. In my case, it's going to start on port 8082 because I have another process running on 8080. Uh, but you see that there is really nothing fancy around here. Okay, so our application uh, started. 
I'll just open up a new window. We'll go to localhost 8082. And this is our application. This is the home page, the index page. And then we have the three sections that I've mentioned earlier, profile, admin, and management. Uh, we can click them and we see we are on the profile page. Hit the admin, this is the admin page. Hit management, this is the management page. Just plain old text. And then of course we have API public test one, which returns that string. This is the rest controller and test two, which returns a different string. Again, this is the test controller API. So it's really a standard Spring Boot application, which has some time leaf pages. Uh, this source code can be downloaded from the link in the video below and this is the starting point for the rest of the tutorial. So we'll start with this unsecure app because you saw me navigate to all of those pages uh, you know, as an anonymous user and step by step we'll start to add Spring Boot, Spring Boot security dependencies, we'll start to configure security and we'll see how those things impact uh, the resources that uh, various users can access. Now, I highly encourage you to download this application, check it out a little bit, uh, run it, get familiar with it because this is what we're going to use uh, from now on. Before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at RomanianCoder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com. Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.